ram came forward and uh, we could do some programs virtually so thanks to the support of the cultural committee and also the temple management temple board of directors uh, hopefully uh, this is a very important topic and i don't think that we need a big introduction on mr ram kaushik because you all know several years ram and ram's family dedicated for uh, uh, cultural committee and also uh, for uh, uh, music uh he was the chair of the cultural committee and also as a teacher a carnatic music uh, teacher and uh, also running a youtube channel dedicated on carnatic music thanks uh, i have a special thanks to ram for agreeing this is the first event and hopefully we can bring more programs in the future and uh, uh, music you know i am um, i am a layman just enjoy the music but you know there is lot of creativity uh, in the music and that appears uh, in technical terms called the improvisations improvisations where the every music uh, every carnatic or hindustani music when you hear again and again from different voices in different ways they have some creativity built in and also uh, each music has a language that language communicate which is uh, which is an unbelievable thought and unbe- unbelievable feeling and uh, today uh, we have uh, um, uh, ram kaushik and uh, i'm very thankful for the ram kaushik for uh, agreeing for this program and uh, um, uh, dr reddy do you want to say a few words or uh, dr mahadevan uh, being our first program if you want to say a few words Uh, welcome to uh, make some comments then uh, otherwise i'll open the floor for uh, ram kaushik yeah just to open the floor i do not have any comments uh, you have already spoken uh, thank you yes. thank you for uh, initiating the program okay thank you i would like to maximize the time for ram so <laughs> thank, thank you okay great thank you all I, i firstly thank you to the cultural committee uh, this has been a very long hiatus for from classical music uh, because i don't need to talk about the public health crisis in the world today so one of the casualties is uh, of course the opportunity to listen to live music and we have unfortunately lost that ability for this past year um i'm i'm hoping that the temple will cult, you know continue to support uh, classical music and dance and all the wonderful artists around the world who are struggling today because for people like me who are enthusiasts but who are not professionals it's it's one situation but there are others struggling to put money on the table uh, for, uh, uh food on the table for their families so um i feel that it is our responsibility as music rasikas to to support the cause so i would one request i would have to all of you is there are many charities working to support the indian classical arts during these tough times when artists are not able to earn uh, so please please make a donation to those organizations okay so with that request um thanks to everyone who who kind of made this sort of uh, lecture demonstration type uh, program possible uh, i see a lot of friends and family here so thank you for attending um a few kind of logistics items uh i will people who have heard me maybe practice are little fearful that ashokan didn't put an end time <laughs> to this program uh i want to first allay those uh, you know i once i start uh, people worry that i may not stop for a while but i will try to finish in about an hour because i think we are in zoom fatigue these days i think so one hour one hour 15 minutes with questions and answers is what i'm i'm hoping we will do uh a few other logistics items um uh, this is a very variable audience i think so there will there are some 
who are very knowledgeable about the art and some who are coming at it from a novice standpoint hopefully you will all maybe at least there will be food for thought for all of you uh, so it may be a broad mix of uh, audiences so please thank you for your patience there the other item is uh, the principles that i will talk about apply equally to both carnatic and hindustani music so if you are coming at it from the hindustani perspective my examples may be carnatic because that's what i'm familiar with but hopefully you can draw the analogies to the hindustani system uh, lastly i will be singing mostly i'll be demonstrating snippets so you may feel like i'm not singing the whole thing <laughs> but i'm trying to give you examples to sort of prove the point i'm trying to make okay so with with that introduction uh, let me begin with a short prayer Can you give me an indication Ashokan that you can hear the Tanpura? Thank you. <clears throat> Gajananam Bhuta Ganadi Sevitam ಕಪಿತಜಂಬೂಫಲಸಾರಭಕ್ಷಿತಗಣಾಧಿ ಸೇವಿತ ಕಪಿತಜಂಬೂಫಲಸಾರಭಕ್ಷಿ ಉಮಾಸುತ ಶೋಕವಿಶಕಾರಣ ಉಮಾಸುತ ಶೋಕವಿಶಕಾರಣ ನಮಿ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಪಾದ ಪಂಕಜ ನಮಿ ನಮಿ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಪಾದ ಪಂಕಜ ನಮಿ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಪಾದ ಪಂಕಜ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣನಾಥ ಸಿಂಧೂರವರ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಾಗರ ಖರಿವದನ ಲಂಬೋದರ ಲಕುಮಿಕರ ಅಂಬಾಸುತ ರಾಮರ ವಿನೂತ ಲಂಬೋದರ ಲಕುಮಿಕರ ಸಿದ್ಧಚಾರಣ ಗಣಸೇವಿತ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ವಿನಾಯಕೇಯ ನಮೋ ನಮೋ ಲಂಬೋದರ ಲಕು ಮೀಕರ ಸಕಲ ವಿದ್ಯಾ 
आदि पूजित सकल विद्या आदि पूजित सर्वोत्तम थे ये नमो नमो लंबोधर लकु मी कर लंबोधर लकु मी कर लंबोधर लकुमी कर ओके सो द फर्स्ट थिंग यू शुड कीप इन माइंड इज हाउ मच ऑफ दैट was composition and how much was improvisation there is no right or wrong answer but put that thought in your mind for a minute okay so can you see my um, the the screen the slides okay so the outline of what i'm presenting today is i'll first go through some basic concepts in indian classical music three of them and we'll go really quick in that but i want to make sure that everybody has a grounding in what those three con basic concepts are i'll cover a couple of analogies to to think to help you think about indian classical music we'll discuss some characteristics of a musical composition with some examples and then we will look at improvisation as the other side of that coin and then we'll look at the balance how do musicians balance these two things and then we will close with a question and answer session okay so let's look at the first concept so for those who have been glued to the television watching the last india australia series uh, cricket series uh the the common thing between a cricket test and indian music right in both the pitch is important okay so for those who didn't understand that joke so i have somebody a cricket enthusiast explain that to you uh but essentially the base pitch at which you sing or or play an instrument is is very important let me just demonstrate so for example श्री गणनाथ दिस इज द बेस पिच आई सैंग एट सो इफ आई चेंज दिस बेस पिच श्री श्री गणनाथ sindur varna this is a lot lower okay shri gadnanatha let me go back to the original pitch takes me a while to get back to the to the base shri gadnanatha so this is the effect of changing the bass pitch and in western music of course you have compositions that are composed specifically for certain pitches but in indian music usually it's the concept is relative so the entire composition can move up and down based on the, your voice capabilities or where you feel comfortable singing so that's that's uh, the first Uh, important concept second is raga which you can think of as a melodic framework so it's a set of rules grammar and we will i'll give you a little more um, examples to to get your mind around this right um so a raga is not just notes although notes are a component you could have combinations of notes 
the way you glide from note to note the speed of the phrase uh, the curvature that goes there are little explosions that happen all those things together make up a melodic framework for that what is called a raga okay so one exa let me quickly sing a couple of phrases from so the glide how you sing that glide matters then the shake the the uh, amp if you're a physics student the amplitude of that shake matters right the frequency of that shake matters all those things play into a raga this could be a combination the way you shake that defines the framework of the draga so in so my i used the same notes but the gliding was different and this is now more attuned to a hindustani style of rendition of this raga so the melodic framework changes right based on all these factors okay so the third concept is tal which is a rhythmic framework so this is actually easier maybe to latch on to teliye le ro ra ma bhakti marg munu teliye le ro ra ma bhakti marg munu tat tat dhim tat tat dhim tat tat dhim tat 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 dhim tat teliye le ro ra so it's got a certain gait to it right so that's a rhythmic framework so you could have other rhythmic frameworks for example en tati kuluke indiro en tati kuluke tati tatadhim takadhiku takat en tati kuluke okay so that has a certain rhythmic set to it the length of that phrase that is also part of the thala one more quick example of a different rhythmic frame janani ninu vinna amba janani ninu vinna tatadhim tatakadhim takadhim takatakadhim so tatadhim takatakadhim takadhim 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 this is a seven beat cycle which has a slightly different gait to it okay so the basic concept shruti raga and tala okay so just keep those as a basis of our discussion today next uh, i'd like to cover maybe a couple of analogies which may be useful to think about when you listen to indian music the first one is that you can think of every raga as a language so what do i mean by that the language has certain rules grammar right and there are 
books written in a particular language. Similarly, every composition is a book in that language, right? So if you have a raga, that's analogous to say, let's take English, right? Every composition is a unique look, unique comp uh, interpretation of that language. Now, you, you can take that analogy sometimes too far, but let's keep that, keep the analogy for now. Uh, like my friend Shankar had an excellent point yesterday where he, he said, you build a comp, you build a book, right? Through words, sentences, and then paragraphs and books, right? Similarly, you build the rendition of a raga in similar ways, small phrases, phrases that link together, right? So, and then you build the exposition of the raga. So that's a useful way to think about it. Now, the, the language has a certain grammar, right? So you have prepositions, you have whatever, conjunctions. Uh, I don't remember my Ren and Martin from back in my British times, but whatever. So you have figures of speech. Mm, so, what did I do here? So there's, if you listen closely, there are wide loops happening and the loops keep so it, it, it uh, the circle sort of becomes smaller, right? So it's a sort of a spiral effect. So that is a, a certain shape in this raga. Now that shape is is critical to the raga, right? So there are many such rules of shapes, curves. So from where I start, where I end, and how that curve happens is a rule in the lang in that language. It's 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 like. Um, uh, you can think of a poem, right? It's it's a way of expressing that language. Okay, so every raga is a language, composition as a book. Another uh, analogy is every raga is a person, like a Devi or a Devata. What are the implications of that statement? Um, A raga has a unique personality. So you can think of some person, right? They have a certain personality and every composition has some interaction with that personality. You have conversation, you talk to that person, you get angry with that person, you maybe express love, right? So there is some interaction with that personality and that is a composition. Um, let's take a couple of examples so I don't just keep talking and uh, <laughs> sing a little bit. So, actually, I was remembering a, a quote by the famous musician T. Brinda uh, back in the early, I think it was probably mid 20th century, when the Music Academy of Madras started having lecture demonstrations. And now T. Brinda was a musician who let her music do the talking, right? She, she, she very quiet, would not, no conversation really, uh, very deeply into her music. So she made a comment that in Tamil, So for those who didn't understand, the, the comment is, I'm hearing that they are actually talking about music these days. So the point of that is music is such a deeply spiritual and intense internal experience that she didn't want to talk about it. 
course times have changed so we have to explain things uh, rather than so that people can appreciate it but i just uh, i was recalling that uh, anyway sorry for the digression so every raga analogies are raga as a language raga as a personality so if every uh, composition is an interaction with the with the raga let me give you a, uh, maybe a couple of examples there these are all compositions in the same raga right i'm going to give you three or four of these i'm going to rattle them off right tulasi jag janani so the chakraja composition to so you can see it's low tulasi jag janani stays in that lower octave same raga muruga muruga yenral uruga do undan ullam mid range different rhythmic structure same raga right so that's a different lens into that raga shri raj gopal ala shri starts high goes higher <laughs> okay another lens another uh, interaction with that raga same raga different compositions okay so let's look at personality for example first let's look at the other idea of emotion or personality chade budhirvanur manasa chade buddhi manur tadarnano this raga is supposed to have veer ras which is determination right it's a it's a what should we say a more aggressive anupama guna buddhi ನೋ so this is a more brisk so you can't sort of change the you, of course a different composition might handle this raga differently but right now it's a personality that is aggressive right and determined to move so um by the way for those who are uh, listening i'm not i'm deliberately not uh, telling you which raga these are so you can play a little bit of guessing game on the side if you want in the in the qa session we can figure out what ragas these were okay all right so i'll leave you with these two analogies and then we'll move to composition okay so every composition is a lens into that raga <coughs> Indian classical music is primarily a, a by ear tradition right it's not a written down notative you in fact there are lots of debates on whether it's even notatable right uh, you know in these in this age of artificial intelligence and all the stuff right maybe there maybe there's enough detail that you can capture in notation but for the most part it's um primarily a, a 
you know sharpening the ear <laughs> tradition and getting all the nuances that way so compositions played a big role right what they did is they codified the grammar and structure of raga so they gave you examples of a raga cuz otherwise a raga is a very abstract thing right very difficult to communicate unless you are a keen student who's observing the nuances trying to reproduce working hard but for the lay audience the composition is the is the way to pass that raga from generation to generation so that's a very important role that compositions have played in indian classical music okay so let's take uh, maybe a couple of examples again for the பாமரமே உனக்கு என்னடி பேச்சே பாமரமே உனக்கு என்னடி பேச்சே பாமரமே so this is the scene is um kaikey is is scolding um kaikey is uh, why am i suddenly missing the name of the hunchback i'm blanking out somebody mandara mandara sorry mandara mandara thank you thank you uh, i should have written the name down uh, memory is going these days anyway so the scene is she is actually scolding mandara that how dare you give me such a proposition rama is my favorite you are you are actually suggesting that i put bharata on the throne right so this phrase is pretty aggressive right mm-hmm. உனக்கு பட் இட் ஆல்சோ கோடிஃபைஸ் த ராகா தரிரி பாமரமே உனக்கு சோ யூ கேன் சிங் திஸ் சோ தோ த the phrase has come down in the composition so that we are we it enables us to know understand how that raga is structured right so otherwise if i had just said tari ri ri difficult to understand right pa mara me immediately there is a because there is a word there there is a context it's uh, easier for it to sink into the audience's brain so think about the book analogy right unless the book has something unique to say <laughs> it's not likely to sell right so composing for the sake of composing is not going to work right you have to have something unique or an interesting to say otherwise it will not last in across the generations so that's the other point about composition so um so what are the properties of a co- composition so it ha- has to be i think you know maybe dr mahadevan is is far more knowledgeable about this topic as a, as a you know very creditable composer himself but i i wrote a few properties of this um composition i'm sure i missed a few but music and prose must both or poetry must be intertwined appropriately it can have rhythmic aspects it can express emotions and i will look at some examples in a minute there are different types of compositions structurally and we'll let's look at a few examples of the of structures right bhoga moksha dana vam bhaga sthita shaila jaya 
भोग मोक्षदान वाम भाग स्थित शैल जाय योग गुरु गुहात्म जाय त्याग ध्वजाय अजाय त्याग राय नमस्ते tight right structurally very tight it's got words packed together right so, and faster speeds so that is one kind of structure in this composition same raga kana kana ruchi ni rupamu kako darshaya narama kana kana ruchi ni rupamu kako darshaya narama kana kana ruchi same raga in the previous phrase i sang योग मोक्षदानोशन so there there's this concept of navarasas or nine different emotions and compositions can be um used to convey any of those emotions it could be a combination of those emotions as well so let's take some examples actually one of the problems i'm having in this is, is switching ragas quickly because usually when you sing you are deep into one raga i, I have to ex, uh, come out but okay that's a good good exercise paluku boti ni सभलो न पालू कुबोटिनी सभलो न सो इन दिस सॉन्ग चागराजा इज एक्चुअली एक्सप्रेसिंग डिस्गस्ट ही इज ही इज एक्चुअली स्कोल्डिंग पीपल हु हैव वेरी व्हाट शुड आई से मर्सनरी मोटिव्स हु आर नॉट गॉडली पालू कुबोटिनी सभलो आई वॉन्ट सिंग द होल थिंग इन द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ टाइम बट सो डिस्गस्ट एन एग्जाम्पल दे परम सुखवनु परम सुखवनु परम सुखवनु व्हाट इज द इमोशन एक्सप्रेस्ड हियर वेरी क्लियर सुखवनु राइट ब्लिस सो अनदर काइंड ऑफ इमोशन आई गिव यू वन एग्जांपल बिफोर खेडे बुद्धि मानुर छेड़े बुद्धि मानूर मन छेड़े बुद्धि मानूर वॉट इज द डील हियर डिटर्मिनेशन राइट यू कुड देर इज यू नो यू कुड इंटरप्रेट इट्स डिफरेंटली इफ यू लाइक बट दैट्स जनरली माई इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ वॉट दैर इज वन मोर लास्ट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एन इमोशन कांत नो डूचन मिल कि मोरी गवत 
ಕಾಂತನೋಡು ಚೆನ್ನು ಮೆಲ್ಲೆ ಕಾಂತನೋಡು ಚೆನ್ನು ಮೆಲ್ಲೆ ಕಿಳಿ ಮೋಳಿ ಸೂಚಮಿ ಗವದ this is a malayalam composition which i sang for ashokan right <laughs> no it, uh, it is a composition expressing tenderness right so it is a it's a gopika or you could think of it in many different uh, metaphorical contexts but it is it's a very gentle romantic song okay <laughs> so that's a different kind of emotion so those were sort of emotional um different emotions that are expressed in compositions so emotion is one axis by which you can look at it the other axis is structure right so structure could be there are different types of compositions in a given raga so there are what are called varnams ಆಯಿ so what is this this is taught to uh, even earlier students because they codify a lot of the grammar of the raga it's a long composition which has all the possibilities of the raga woven in into it so varnam you could have um, krithis or kind of shorter compositions or longer ones kolu vai same raga as what i sang before viriboni so i'm singing different structures in the same raga okay kolu vai so this has a certain gait ram kolu vai bal go pal pal ya ashum bal slow drawn out composition right very serious meandering feel to it um ಎಲರಡನೆ ಕಮಿನಿ ಎಲರಡನೆ ಕಾಮಿನಿ ಎಲರಡನೆ ಕಾಮಿನಿ ವೇದ ತೋಡಿ ತೇ ಕಾಮಿನಿ this is a javali which is a supposedly a lighter piece <laughs> this is raga is so heavy that even lighter pieces in this raga are heavy enough but nevertheless it is a it is a composition uh, generally of uh, you could in a expressing love or uh, it could be even erotic sometimes but the idea is krishna gopika that sort of interaction you could think of it in metaphorical terms as uh, you know atma uh, the jeevatma talking to paramatma however you want to phrase it but it's a composition which is structurally very different from what we had before as a varna right so very different structures are expressed in these compositions so that's the other point so emotions structures right two two lens two dimensions to look at compositions okay 
All right, so that is enough about compositions by itself. I gave you some examples. Let's move to improvisation. So improvisation, the first thing to note is that it is generally based on the strong foundation of composition. So think of an author who is maybe um, writing a book, right? Uh, it is clear that uh, any author has read a lot, right? You cannot, uh, you cannot just dive into the writing game without having read a lot. So that's the first thing. So there is a foundation of composition which that person has sort of experienced, worked with, and then move on that foundation, they build. Okay, so it's not a random, uh, random thing. So let me give you one example of that. Mm. So this is a composition, right? So, from this foundation, if you were going to improvise, Right? So what am I doing here? I'm but I'm I'm not moving away from the framework of the raga. That the grammar, the rules, the curves are all there. Within that framework, you have to see how you can improvise on that foundation. Okay? So um that is one example of building on composition. So one more example I'll give you. So mm, actually, let's I'll give it for this this idea. So to use the language analogy, you can think of this as extempore speaking in a given language and topic. So the meaning of this line is how should I call you, O oh God, that will make you come. So it is a entreaty to the God saying, How many ways can I call you for you to actually show up? So I have to give more than one way, right? <laughs> If I have to, if I have to call God, then I cannot just have one way. Okay, one way. Second way. Third way. I can keep going, right? right? Now I'm really ticked off that God hasn't arrived. So, so this is improvisation in the context of that foundation. Okay, so the foundation is important. You can't just randomly go off improvising, right? That doesn't work. Okay, let's look at the types of improvisation with some examples. I'm just going to look at a few here. There are too many examples to really um, delve into very deeply. But let's start with the, the third bullet there and I'll work my way up actually because I'm looking at it and it's Easier. The third one is actually uh, probably easier. So, uh, 
வாட் இஸ் கால் ஸ்வர் கல்பனா ஆர் கல்பனா ஸ்வரம் டிபெண்டிங் ஆன் இந்துஸ்தானி மே கால் இட் ஸ்வர் கல்பனா கல்பனா ஜஸ்ட் மீன்ஸ் இமேஜினேஷன் ஸோ ஸ்வர் இஸ் நோட்ஸ் யூசிங் நோட்ஸ் இமேஜினேட்டிவ்லி வித் இன் த கான்டெக்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த ராகா ஸோ ராக அண்ட் கமிங் அப் வித் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் காம்பினேஷன்ஸ் விச் ஆர் மியூசிக்கல் but follow the grammar of the raga is this pre- prepared no definitely not right i don't know what what is coming right now right no musician will know they know the general structure of the raga that's it you it's a new adventure every time you jump into this mama gari sani sari ga mama 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 gari ni கரி மக பமத பாமகாரி பத நிசனி பத பத பமகரி கமாகரி கரி மக பமத பத மப கம க பமத பம் கரி கம பத நீ தவம கரி கம பத நிசனி தவம பதனிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரிசரி
snippet of alap so when musicians you hear in concerts sing without words and you're thinking what's going on right they are here for half an hour one hour it's going this is what they're doing it is they are building structures on the spot right so they're constructing a building over your you know just as you're watching there are many more types um i'm not pallavi and other things so I, i'll keep it free. so many aspects to improvisation okay so how do these balance right that's the main the skill is how do you balance composition and improvisation how do you strike that balance so it's not one or the other so when you listen to indian music you will have a blend of these two things now different musicians may balance it differently right some comp some musicians may may say these compositions are very sacred i want a very high percentage of my musical output to be composition and remember there is always a little bit of play in this composition right there is always interpretation of composition so there is a little bit of improvisation that always happens but indian classical music by its very nature is a spontaneous experience so my view personal view you can <laughs> disagree if you want is there is always a high percentage of improvisation always right so if you are singing preset compositions one after another uh, you are just accumulating volume in my mind right it's not um, uh, it is it it is moving away from the the spirit in which the adventurous spirit in of indian classical music the balance can also change at various points in the concert so you could have sections of the concert which are set compositions and then you have um sections of the concert where improvisation is very high okay so another important point is that what is improvisation today can get codified so i have a couple of examples uh, i'm sure the musicians in the audience can <laughs> come up with many examples of this but um mm, so raga called todi in karnatic very rich tradition thousands of years back people have been developing compositions more structurally has changed over the years over the centuries right lot of work has gone in great musicians great composers 20th century comes along kartike yagange yagouri tanya the great composer of 20th century papanasham shivan composed this piece right mal marga shanmuga muruga guha magapadiyum vidiyum torumal marga so he came up with a new struck new phrases in this composition from with if you look at the compositions before in the 19th century these phrases were not there 
but what has happened is musicians who have mined the diamond mines for that century have been improvising on that raga right and papanasham shivan the genius of that composer he codified some of these phrases in that composition so what was improvisation became composition nijada savarada nidaga i mean from nowhere in, in kalyani was not not heard before in composition but it has certainly been there as improvisation so what is improvisation at a given point in time could easily become composition and the reverse reverse is always true we always build on compositions for improvising all musicians do that okay so that's a important point to note that the balance of improvisation composition uh, is always a moving target and composers are always inspired by new improvisations that they see and this generation uh, every generation has very exciting musicians and who 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 push the boundaries of what music is right and this younger generation i mean having watched the last two months of uh music season i had soft right for them no no door is uh what shall we say no door will will be left unchallenged so they will try it and see what they can what mine what diamonds they can mine so i'm sure those will all become compositions in the future so that's a final point that i wanted to make today okay so um before so that was sort of uh, finishes my uh view of composition and improvisation before we get into question and answer um what i will do is uh, let me finish with a with a small composition and and then we can get to a question and answer session um ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚಂದ್ರನಿಕ್ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಲ್ಲ ದಿವ್ಯ ಮುಖ ಚಂದ್ರನಿಕ್ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಮಾರಾಭಿರಾಮನಿಕ್ ಮನು ಪರಂದಮನಿಕ್ ಮಾರಾಭಿರಾಮನಿಕ್ ಮನು ಪರಂದಮನಿಕ್ ಮಾರಾಭಿರಾಮನಿಕ್ ಮನು ಪರಂದಮನಿಕ್ ಈರಾರ ನಾಮನಿಕ್ ರವಿ ಕುಲ ಸೋಮನಿಕ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚಂದ್ರನಿಕ್ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಲ್ಲ ದಿವ್ಯ ಮುಖ ಚಂದ್ರನಿಕ್ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಚಂದ್ರನಿಕ್ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ಕೋವೈ ಮಣಿ ವಾಯನಿಕ್ ಮಾಯನಿಕ್ ಮಂಗಳ ಕೋವೈ ಮಣಿ ವಾಯನಿಕ್ ಮಾಯನಿಕ್ ಮಂಗಳ ಕೋದಂಡ ಕೈಯನಿಕ್ ಮೇಯನಿಕ್ ಮಂಗಳ ತಾವು ಗುಣಶೀಲನಿಕ್ ಸತ್ಯ ವಿಶಾಲನಿಕ್ ತಾವು ಗುಣಶೀಲನಿಕ್ ಸತ್ಯ ವಿಶಾಲನಿಕ್ ತಾವು ಗುಣಶೀಲನಿಕ್ ಸತ್ಯ ವಿಶಾಲನಿಕ್ ದೇವರನು ಕೂಲನಿಕ್ ದಶರಥನ್ ಬಾಲನಿಕ್ ದೇವರನು ಕೂಲನಿಕ್ ದಶರಥನ್ ಬಾಲನಿಕ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚಂದ್ರನಿಕ್ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳ ನಲ್ಲ ದಿ 
ಸತ್ಯಮುಖ ಚಂದ್ರನ ಕೇಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಚಂದ್ರನ ಕಯ ಮಂಗಳಂ ಶುಭ ಮಂಗಳಂ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಳಂ so i want to thank the audience uh, very patiently listen to this uh, i hope every, you got something from it and I, i you know my purpose is to share the joy of indian classical music and get more people hooked <laughs> because as they say it's uh, you know i i i view this as a what shall we say uh, i i hate to use the word disease uh, but basically once you are hooked there is uh, it's an addiction right you, because there is always treasures to to mine uh, it's a constant journey and it will it will uh, enrich your lives i think so uh, with that i want to thank ashokan and the temple committee for giving me this opportunity and i can open it up open up the line for i will try my best to answer any questions thank you ram this is one of the difficult task you know that uh, see uh, uh, when we switching from one swara to another so quickly uh, especially when in getting into different ones uh, uh, not like a concert program uh, it's one of the difficult task for a musician thank you for taking undertaking this responsibility so let us take uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, um ask uh, uh, any questions any ha- you have or you can type it in the chat room either way is fine um, i should there is already some questions in the chat okay uh um so actually if you uh yeah for, i mean the if you can if you can hopefully see the cartoon there you know don't worry about asking stupid questions because i i have a lot of stupid answers i mean i'm very free with them as my kids will will uh, attest to so um actually it would help if so i don't uh, uh, i mean I, i don't want to hit the computer right now so if somebody could read out the question that would be okay uh, i can uh, read it and the first question is uh, thanks for explaining the concept so well can you please talk little bit uh, about the differences in carnatic and hindustani ah okay good question um so both traditions are of course amazing right i mean it will take several lifetimes to maybe touch the surface on e- either of these two traditions right so the basic ideas of raga tal uh structure all the concepts that we talked about have parallels in both carnatic and hindustani okay i'm i'm by no means am i qualified to delve into the intricacies of hindustani music um but i can tell you this so the the rules of how the raga shapes right the the shapes that i explained to you so maybe quick example tha tha ri 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 ga 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 this curve is raga kannada right this is in carnatic so but if you were to look at say darbari kannada in the hindustani tradition ri ga 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 so that the curve curvature of that same note ga mari 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 the vina players in the audience mari mari ma that's essentially it is not even sometimes not even touching the note it is saying right so curve is different so this is an important difference there are ways in which those the ragas have have the styles of those two music have evolved uh, are different but they follow the same principle so you can certainly appreciate both styles of music so let me stop with that ashok 
Okay. Now, next question. This is a Chinua here. I thought ragas themselves themselves were made to express a single unique emotion. Can you uh, give some examples of composition in the same raga being used in two, three different emotions, preferably opposite emotions like sadness and happiness? Ah, uh, yes, absolutely, definitely. There are compositions that express. Uh, in fact, even uh, without composition. Right, even raga alaps, for example, which are abstract, no words. The same raga, one day you—it depends on what emotion you are feeling as a musician. <laughs> Sometimes you are expressing uh, your own sadness or your own happiness in that raga. So, yes, I agree that compositions will reflect different emotions. Um, the same raga, yes. I, I mean, I, I agree with the sentiment. I would say, yeah. Okay, and uh, Chris has a question. Can you tell the difference between nirval and sangadi? See that you mentioned about the improvisation techniques. Uh, ah, yeah, that's a good question. So sangati, I would say, is uh, sort of development, which is to some extent, say. 80-20, pre-done, right? 80% sort of the structure is already done, right? So the example I gave you, Yenna shulli yaraital, Yenna shulli yaraital, Yenna shul. So these are, to some extent, they can be sung as stacked up. They're less free flowing than ve, ve, ye, this is an open canvas. Open canvas. Nerval is 90% is improvisation or 95 or even 100. Sangadi, I would say, is the other way. There is more composition, less improvisation. That would be my difference. That would be the. Okay, thank you. Next question. Sri Vastav, yes, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask the question directly. Yes. Ah, Hi, hi. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the talk. It was very nice. Uh, so this question, um, I uh, I came across this thing yesterday, actually. I was listening to um, a concert from 1964 uh, of Balachandras. And uh, he played the song uh, Rara Sita um, in, in Hindola Vasantam Ragam. But uh, the, the curious thing that I found was uh, it sounded completely different uh, from, from every other version of uh, Rara Sita that I've heard. And, uh, but the, the issue is that uh, it was not just um, the Raga itself sounded different. And then uh, I looked into it carefully and it, it, was, it was the same song. I could clearly hear that, but it was a, the Raga was, was um, different. For example, the Daivatam was, was a different Daivatam that he used. Uh, I think Sapam Rara Sita. That's how he played it. Rara Sita. But other people use Shuddha Devatam. So my question is I mean, clearly it happens because these traditions were oral and there was no, there was no real documentation and all that. But at what point does uh, the improvisation truly affect uh, a composition? Um, is, that, is, that, uh, is that intentional or does it impact um, the legacy of the composition in any way or the legacy of the raga in any way? Because it's clear yeah. that the yeah. Hindu Vasantam has suffered a, a, <laughs> a split personality out here. Okay. Fair. Good question. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm trying to steer away from any controversies here. <laughs> uh, but in general, I would say, don't, you know, let's not think of it as suffering, right? In, in some cases, the actual raga uh, shapes have changed over the centuries. Uh, we are I'm not going to judge what is better and what is worse. Take Ananda Bhairavi. There is lots of lecture demonstrations on how the Raga has evolved over the centuries. Right? And there are many schools which will maintain those styles also. 
right so brinda school might maintain a certain style of ananda bhairavi and other school samangudi school might allow certain phrases which the brinda school may not so these are all i would say enrich our tradition rather than focus on the differences we should uh, welcome these great musicians ideas on what these ragas you can take and discard what you don't like right <laughs> let me put it that way so in the sunni tradition also has variants of ragas like this certain gharanas will sing the same raga in a certain way other gharanas will allow a foreign note to creep in right so there this parallel is there right so ragas are not static things ragas are evolving evolving creatures they also change shape over the years okay let me let me in the interest of time we can discuss it offline free what's up thank you shokan yeah next question is that raga power and composition go hand in hand how to select a raga based on composition and bhava viva sheshadri sas how to select sorry can you phrase last question again please uh, how to select a raga based on composition and bhava okay yeah, this is a deeply personal choice i think um so i think it de- sort of depends on your aesthetics whether you like uh so for example there are some ragas which i can listen to on an instrument uh like a violin or a uh, maybe a flute for example some ragas are very apt for that instrument but i'm not going to sing them right firstly because i cannot sing them <laughs> the the speeds at which they operate are not something that maybe my voice can do so you have to look at compositions and ragas based on your individual aesthetics so i will leave it at that okay so you be, there is no hard and fast rules on these emotions or uh, choice of compositions i hope that uh, Uh, not uh, not a great answer but i hope that at least gave some context okay uh, uh, a related question uh, related to one of the previous uh, answers how there been new ragas added to the carnatic repository recently a repository mm. how were they added is that the question or uh, is there anything uh, no, no. how how they have been added no he is asking uh, lakshmi reddy is asking have there been new ragas added uh, recently to the carnatic repertoire repertoire yeah oh. i'm sorry this is this is rukmini from san diego i'm mira's friend um, okay so my question is um, how do you come up with a new raga for example and how have there been new ragas added you know um, are are these like tri- are we sticking to the traditional ragas you know that's okay okay great question yeah okay, excellent <laughs> question so yeah, i probably didn't cover this because uh, i was trying to <laughs> i was trying to stick to topic and not because you can talk for you know there, there are so many different topics in music but the, your point is a good one um so consider for example a great m- composer like tyagaraja agraj swami right chinnana dena chai pati ti ve chinnana dena so sari ga ma sa sa pa ma chai pa pa ga this is a variant of karara priya so before tyagaraja this raga did not exist this is one of the ragas after tyagaraja also no no work has been done in this raga right but his genius was he found a strand of the raga which to him represented a unique entity so he is i mean his greatness and his inspiration enabled him to create that raga 
I am not even going to. I, there is enough work to be done in uh, for for me for the foreseeable next few births. I'm okay. I think I'm, you know, with the existing. So how are ragas created? Inspiration. I, that's all. I, I mean, Ma, Dr. Mahadevan may have a better answer, but there are great composers who have pushed the envelope of what what are unique ragas, right? So. Uh, how are there are even ragas being created today? Some of them stick, and some of them die. Right, mm -hmm. the ones that die, sometimes they are so close to existing melodic structures. Right, if you have a painting that looks exact, I mean, you have two painters who are already great in <laughs> painting the same way. You you put a third painting, it's nobody cares. Right, so mm -hmm. that happens too. Yeah. Hope that. Uh, Yes. The question. Thank you, Mr. Ram. Thank sure, you very much. Sure, anytime. Thanks for the question. So that was the questions in the chat room. Any other questions, if you want, we can ask now. And otherwise, we will uh, conclude. Okay. Um, uh, to everyone, thank you for joining today. And the next uh, month, uh, we have Dr. Mahadevan is going to do the lecture demonstration um, and thank you Dr. Mahadevan and uh, uh, thank you uh, Mr. Ram for uh, uh, taking the, the especially the national the US uh, audience to take the foundation which uh, in a classical music when we hear there are it's a language while mentioning the raga the language yeah, is a composition sora Raga, Tala, which build a powerful language, you can take the, uh, the audience into a different level. But when we hear the, you know, we are, uh, we have a lot of options, Hindustani, that is a beautiful Indian classical music, and Hindu Carnatic is another one. When we have, also when we come to United States, we have blues, jazz, and other uh, music compositions are there. But, uh, Sometimes people think that you know some of one some songs can take us to a level easily, and some of them maybe not so attractive. But Carnatic music provides a foundation which no other music provides, which takes us to a composition uh, with a lot of combinations uh, to a higher level. And uh, um, today, uh, Mr. Ram took uh, the the uh, risk the adventure of uh, taking the compositions and explaining in a, uh, about one hour time. Thank you, Ram, and thank everyone for joining today. Um, so if you have any comments, any suggestions, uh, uh, email us, and thank you very much. Good night. Thank you so much, Shokan. Thanks to the committee. Please uh, continue the tradition and make sure we have more live concerts and praying that we will support live concerts, uh, God willing, very soon. So everybody be safe. Thank, Thank you. you.